coronary artery disease, we continue our discussion. And now we'll talk about management of chronic stable angina. In this, in this, first of all, in fact, in all case of CAD, the first and the most important is lifestyle modification. This includes control of body weight. As we know very well, the CAD is very common in those who are obese. Patients should stop smoking and patients should control blood sugar and lipid and control BP. Just to remind you, these are the four major risk factors for coronary artery disease. That is smoking, diabetes, hyperlipidemia and hypertension. Well, so these four major risk factors have to be controlled. Patients should do regular exercise, low fat, low salt diet. Fat is to reduce the body weight. Low salt is to look after into the hypertension and congestive heart failure. Diet rich in fiber, fruit and vegetable again to reduce the body weight and of course to reduce the lipid also. So after the lifestyle modification, we go into drug therapy for a case of chronic stable angina. First and the most important is antiplatelet drug that we give orally. And the most widely used drug is aspirin. We use low dose aspirin. Okay, it reduces postacyclin, uh, it reduces postacyclin synthesis, and that's why it is uh, acting as an antiplatelet drug. Now, the concept is dual antiplatelet therapy. Previously, we were using only a single drug. Now we are using double drug. Well, when we are even using anti-aspirin alone, it used to reduce mortality by 34%. So aspirin definitely has a mortality benefit also, but the concept is to add second drug, and second drug is either Pesugrel or Ticagrel or Clopidogrel. In actual practice, this is the most widely used, and of course this is a regional uh, drug which is very most commonly used, but we have to use only one out of these three. These three drugs are P2Y12 receptor antagonists. And in fact, these drugs are specially useful for those cases where we put a stent. Uh, this we'll talk a little later on. That stent, uh, after to prevent stent th thrombosis, these drugs are really very, very effective drugs. So after giving the two antiplatelet drugs, now the second drug is nitrate. Nitrate, they have a uh, they have double effect. They have an anti-ischemic effect due to systemic venodilatation as well as coronary vasodilatation. dilatation. So let's talk a little bit more about pharmacology of nitrate. They dilate the peripheral venules. So the whole blood is pulled into peripheral tissues. So this reduces the preload and this will lead to reduction in wall tension in the myocardium. This one way of its effectiveness in the angina. Second is of course it is a coronary vasodilator also and this occurred due to release of nitric oxide. So they are double advantage of nitrate for coronary artery disease. Then we use beta blocker. Its primary role is to control the heart rate. In fact, it is always a first line treatment in case of coronary artery disease. Because as we know, more the heart rate, more is the oxygen demand. So we want to control the heart rate and that is we use beta blocker and the most commonly used drug in actual practice is metaprolol. After that we use calcium channel blocker routinely we do not use in a stable angina but we use in a special condition so called prince metal angina which is also known as vasospastic angina and the basic pathology is vasospasm. And they are coronary vasodilators, so we use calcium channel blocker, Prince Metal Angina only 
not in a stable angina, but I thought I, as I'm talking to you regarding angina, so I must mention about role of calcium channel blocker also. Well, statin are used to control the lipids, especially we want that LDL cholesterol should be under normal range. This is especially to, to control LDL cholesterol because more the LDL cholesterol, more is the atherosclerosis, more is the progression of disease. We have a new drug, renolazine. This we use only in refractory cases of chronic stable angina. And we normally we do not use in case of acute angina or acute coronary syndrome, we do not use it. Now, we have certain things, so-called revascularization and coronary artery bypass graph. Where we you do all this thing? Patient has unacceptable level of angina. That means patient has a lot of problem with angina. He's not able to do his day-to-day -day activity also, or he's not able to do his office work. Then we think of revascularization. And especially those, we have a uh, single or two weather disease with normal LV function are there, and patient has unacceptable level of angina. We definitely like to do it so that we have the better outcome of the lifestyle also. So now PTCA, how it is done? We do by Seldinger needle and guide, line, guide bar is there. It is there, you can see. We can, how we really do it? We do it via two approach. Either we can go via radial artery or we can do via femoral artery. Suppose we are going via femoral artery, we puncture femoral artery, we go into, we put the this in, uh, guide wire which enter the internal eyelid, common eyelid, ascending aorta and root of aorta and here is that artery, left coronary artery and the right coronary artery. We inject that dye and we see where the blockage is there. And once we locate the blockage, suppose blockage is here, Okay, then we put the, this is the catheter, and this catheter has a balloon. And once we have positioned it, then we inflate the balloon, and this balloon got inflated, and that will compress the, that will compress the blockage. For example, this is the coronary artery, this is the plaque, and here is the, this catheter, here we have a balloon, we inflate the balloon and when we inflate a balloon, the plaque become like this. Balloon will be like this and the plaque and after that we remove this catheter. Right? At time, what happened? You remove the catheter, this plaque may again come back. In that situation, we like to put a metallic tube, so called stent. Stent will keep this obstruction patent. So, I, a beautiful picture, this is the catheter balloon deflated. This is the catheter balloon inflated. You can see it is inflated. Now, balloon catheter carrying the stent and this is the unexpanded stent and this is the expanded stent. So, you can see beautiful pictures are there and I hope now we have understood what the role of balloon and what is the role of stent. Now, one more thing. Uh, suppose patient is, uh, there are many patients who have a diffuse disease or who are not amendable to uh, PTCA if it's a calcified plaque, then we may go for coronary artery bypass graft. Where we do? Patient having triple vessel disease. Two vessel disease which include proximal LAD. LAD is the one artery, maximum 40 to 50 percent cases LAD is involved. Impaired global LV function or diabetes mellitus is there. Left main coronary artery blockage. Lesion unsuitable for catheter based procedure. In such cases we like to go for coronary artery bypass surgery. So how it is done? The basic funda is, this is the main artery, like, let's, let me draw a line diagram for you. This is the aorta, this aorta, and this is the coronary artery, it has been blocked. 
and we want to do bypass surgery, so what we will do? We unite like this. So the, now the blood will go like this. This is the basic principle of coronary artery bypass graft. Now you can see. So here is the artery that we have taken, united from this to this. We have another artery, this thing, we have united like this. So I hope you understood the basic principle of coronary artery bypass graft. Now, which graft are used? Most commonly used drug is Lima. Left internal memory artery is the most widely and is more convenient to use because the heart is on the left side and Lima is also on the left side. Second artery is Rima, right internal memory artery. Radial artery graft is taken and long saphenous vein is used. Now, the main thing is Arterial graft, they, they, lie, they work for 10 years. Venous graft, the life is only for 5 years. That means they need to be changed after 5 years. That's why arterial graft is much better graft. So a quick recap of the management of chronic stable angina, lifestyle modification, antiplatelet therapy. Now you are, we are going for double antiplatelet therapy. Calcium channel blocker like Delta Zem, we use only in case of Prince metal angina. In a stable angina, normally we don't use it. Beta blocker is a must, mandatory in all cases of CAD, unless there is some contraindication is there, but they are going to control the heart rate. Statin are used to control the LDL cholesterol to be more precise. Renulazin we use only in refractory angina, and for revascularization we use PTCA or we use coronary artery bypass craft. Thank you very much for watching this video.